Matt Busby, the maestro of Manchester United, had groomed a team great enough to beat Europe's best. He was king of soccer. Oh, yes. Well, I say this, this basically was a culmination of everything. This was something you'd striven for, you'd fought for. Uh, as I say, I had a lot of trouble uh, getting mentioned into you, you know, the start. And uh, I felt this was the accomplishment, this mm -hmm. was the... Mm -hmm. Alex Ferguson, they put you through the mill into injury time, almost lost the cup and you win it. The new European champions, the treble, the dream come true for you. Oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Football, by the hell. But they never give in. And that's the winner. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, you must have thought it had gone there with just yeah, a few seconds yeah, left. You sent yeah. Michael up. Yeah, I didn't say anything about P went up on his own. Did he? Right. But anyway, fantastic. I'm so proud of my players. Well done, Alex. You better get back there and celebrate. Fantastic. of Europe's leading football clubs have today come together to announce they have agreed to establish a new midweek competition, the Super League, governed by its founding clubs. Who are the founding clubs? Confirmation. You know, Manchester United, Liverpool and Arsenal, they should know better. The history and tradition that runs through those three clubs is absolutely enormous. I value it. I value the history and tradition that runs through those three clubs. But I tell you what, they leave a lot to be desired at this moment in time. Sorry if you felt that was a long intro, but I felt like I really wanted to make that video because those memories there are what Ed Woodward and Joel Glazer and the Glazer family are betraying. Those memories I had of Manchester United in Europe are some of my favourite memories as a United fan and the idea that they can't ever be repeated again because of the idea of a European Super League, that scares the shit out of me as a fan. And what I want to do in this video is run through and detail all the lies that Woodward and the Glazers have been giving people about this European Super League, about Manchester United's involvement, or lack of involvement, if you were to believe what they were saying. But they weren't telling the truth. They haven't been telling the truth. And the whole time, they've been planning the downfall of Manchester United behind our backs and betraying us all as fans. And these are supposed to be our owners and the executive vice chairman of our club who should have our best interests at heart, but they don't. <clears throat> so what I want to do in this video is sort of detail the timeline of how these lies, lies have developed from, from Woodward in particular, uh, to the point where we're at today, to sort of give us all a bigger and better understanding of exactly what has happened to date. So make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. But let's get into this one. Now, stories about the European Super League, they're not new. I remember Wenger commenting on it about 10 years ago about how it would be a bad thing for football. And uh, alas, uh, <laughs> Arsene Wenger was right. But back in October, Ed Woodward was asked directly about the European Super League and Manchester United's involvement in that. And this is what he had to say. He said, I saw the reports on that. I candidly don't know where they came from. There really isn't anything for us to say. We're engaged on a very regular basis through my role on the ECA, which he's now resigned from, and also at UEFA talking about potential changes to the Champions League from 2024 onwards. You might have read two or three days ago in the press that there was a story about whether the Champions League would go to 36 teams. They're the conversations we're actively involved in, so I can't comment on your question. So what would they directly asked back in October about whether or not these conversations were happening and completely blind-faced lying about whether those conversations were happening. And it wasn't the last time that Ed Woodward lied. If you fast forward to November, where he was involved in a fans forum, that it's, sort of a, it's a meeting that happens a few times a year between a fans representation at Manchester United and Ed Woodward and the board. And at this point, he promised to keep the fans forum, to keep the fans informed 
about any conversations that were happening towards any changes to do with European competitions. He did not do this. Again, like he did in October, in November, he blind faced lied. And he continued that the whole way through. And it's not it, it's not just one section like the fans that Woodward is lying to, or it's one section like the board. He is lying and has been lying to everybody. Because last Friday, there was another fans forum meeting. And bearing in mind what's happened since last Friday, everything at that point was likely signed on the dotted line. The contract's already done. But Woodward did not mention a bean. Richard Arnold was there as well. Neither of them mentioned anything to the fans forum. So the opportunity was there to talk about it in October. The opportunity was there in November at the fans forum and the opportunity arose again on Friday. And Woodward chose to lie on all of these occasions. You cannot trust a word that comes out of this man's mouth. And it, as I said, it's not just the fans that he's been lying to. But since that Fans forum on Friday, everything has happened. And Ed Woodward has resigned from his position on the European Commission's board, which is a sort of the collective of all the, all the clubs in Europe. Manchester United have pulled out of that collective as well, as one of the founding members of this new European Super League. So the lies and the, con the, the, the content, the sheer content here is, it's, Almost unparalleled. It's probably not unparalleled, but it just makes you angry. And it, as I said, it's not just the fans that he's been lying to. If you look at UEFA's president, Alexander Seferin, I think that's how I'm going to pronounce his name for this. He gave a pretty explosive interview where he in particular spoke about Ed Woodward and Juventus's... Pro what's, that, what's the name? Agnelli. This is what he had to say about Woodward and Agnelli. He's saying, if I start with Ed Woodward, he called me last Thursday evening saying he's very satisfied with and fully supports the reforms. And the only thing he wants to talk about was FFP, when obviously he'd already signed something else. We didn't know we had snakes so close to us. Now we know. And check out this uh, little snippet here from Seferin on Woodward. It is. It is in a way, and not only to me, you know, it's personal betrayal to the other clubs. They were promising the others, we are improving, we will do this and that, and they didn't. I mean, I said before, I spoke with the CEO or, or whatever he is at Manchester United, Ed Woodward, on Thursday. He called me, he says, great reforms, I fully support it. Uh, only financial fair play, let's speak in the future, but fantastic great he was happy he looked happy uh or i heard him happy uh i spoke with Daniele, i think 20 times in the last days the last time on saturday when i said i hear rumors about some super league and he says no this is a this is a lie don't believe it i will call you back in one hour and he turned off the phone so it's it's hard to believe the level of immorality of, of, of some people. Woodward has proven himself to be a serial liar to both Manchester United fans, to UEFA, to anybody who wants the truth, really. Because this whole time, Joel Glazer, who's now one of the vice chairman underneath Florentino Perez on this new European Super League, this has always been the plan for the Glazers. Right now, we are seeing the end of a 15, 16, 17 year plan that the Glazers have had. That they've always wanted to come over here and install the American model, business model, on European football. And Woodward has been one of the architects and one of the instigators for helping make all of this happen. Not only did he help them actually get United in the first place, but in terms of the blind face fucking lies that United fans have all been fed over these years, it's just sickening. And I've exposed, I've tried to, I've done my best over the last year or two, few years in terms of calling Woodward and the Glazers out on all of this. But unfortunately, it's very difficult to instigate change. I mean, if those protests didn't weren't able to do it back in 2004, and there was thousands of United fans outside Old Trafford trying their hardest to stop that, 
take over from happening. I don't know what can happen now, but I I, I really hope that something does. And as I said, that video at the start, uh, the video I made at the start of this video was I made me maybe dead sad, really sad, genuinely, because those are some of my favorite memories. And the idea that kids growing up now won't be able to enjoy European football, man, it's just, it's, it's a different gravy. It's a different romance. It's a different lure. It's a different excitement to domestic football. Domestic football is where the bread and butter and where everything is. But the beauty of sometimes getting a draw like Real Madrid in the semi-final, once in a while, once every six, seven, eight years. That's the beauty of it. That's what makes those games so special. So the idea that we're just now going to be playing them three, four times a season, or whatever it's going to be, it's going to be sanitised. And football has been sanitised so badly over the last two years that this is just a, the latest example of it and the worst example of it. But what I wanted to do in this video is, as I said, expose the Glazers, and expose Woodward for the lies that they've been feeding us all for a long time. And it doesn't matter what happens past this point. Fingers crossed that, because I'm hearing stories that cracks are starting to appear, that certain clubs are starting to get cold feet about the decision. And, and if one English team can pull out of this, it means that the whole house of cards can fall. And I hope that does happen. But it doesn't matter whether that happens and whether this can all be put back in the bottle. You can't forget what, has happened here, what Woodward has done, what the Glazers have done, that damage is irreparable. And we have to make sure as fans that change follows in some way, shape or form. I don't know what that will be. And I feel like I'm moaning a lot this week, but Christ, it's, it's hard not to really, isn't it? Because the game that you love is just being sort of shredded up in front of you and there's nothing you can do to stop it. Um, and there's there's just such a a disregard for what fans want. It's just the last thing on their mind. And as you saw in the Florentino Perez interview, he's he's mad. He's absolutely mad. The things he's talking about, talking about how the younger generation are disenfranchised with football. Hell, it's because you keep fucking putting the prices up. Make the tickets cheaper. You're going to get your younger people in the stadiums and you won't get an old crowd. That's a very simple solution, but that will mean you make less money. So therefore, it's not a solution that you're prepared to do. Talking about shortening games because they're 90 minutes and it's mental. I I didn't think I could become any more disillusioned with football after what's happened in the last 12 months with, you know, just everything that's happened. VAR, the pandemic, no fans in stadiums. It's just football is just not what it was. And then for this to happen on top of that, mind-blowing. But I'll continue to do what I can on this channel. I'll always do videos like this. I want to do more videos like this. If there's anything you want me to do that I haven't done when it, with regards to the European Super League or Ed Woodward or the Glazers or any videos that I could do, let me know in the comments. Hit me up on Twitter, at Sam Peoples underscore. My DMs are open. Send me ideas. I want to start doing things. I actually want to do a video. Maybe what can happen next? What are, What's the options that are lying in front of us now as Man United fans? What could happen next? I think that's probably a video I want to do. But make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. Make sure you share this video around. That video I did at the, at the beginning, it's important because that's the history that Ed Woodward and the Glazers are trying to wipe away from Manchester United. And history is, is at the core of what makes United United. 